All right. It is Dr. David E. Clark here. Welcome to our live stream, and welcome to those of you who are watching the replay. Uh, if you're a narc, frankly, you're not welcome here unless you're willing to change, and frankly, you're not going to change, so we won't worry about you. Now, we want to reach as many people as we can with these live streams, of course, with the anti-narc, anti-codependency message, so you, you folks know what to do. You share the live stream, you like it, you comment, and this helps us get more people. We're trying to save as many people as we can, women especially, who are abused from these narcs and get them out of these marriages, out of these relationships. Now, let me check in as we start. We'll see. Um, yeah, bye bye, narcs. Yes, yeah, says Susan. <laughs> That's right. We don't need you. And frankly, we don't want you. And we don't like you. Instagram's coming in here. We're trying out a, a, a different studio here. This is actually my gracious home. I've banished my wife, the blonde, down the hall. She's in the study doing who knows what. And uh, this is going to be a more comfortable place, I think, for us. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see what's going to come in here as we get started here. Yeah. Your videos have helped me heal from narc trauma. Very good. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, you've got to figure out, come out of the fog, the narc fog, the codependent fog, I should say. Realize the truth. And then get ready to leave. I don't just tell you just to leave. We have a whole program, series of books, video series to help you get ready to leave. Get your kids ready to leave. Keep the kids from being turned against you. And then, of course, after the divorce, and you're going to divorce the narc. Uh, if he files on you, great. But I doubt he will do that. You'll get you'll get out of there. And that's that's a whole process. We have a book for that too, escaping your narcissist. And then, after that, I didn't want to divorce. Now, what is the book to help you heal from the trauma? You don't heal from the trauma as you're trying to get out. That's too much for anyone to do. You can't spin all those plates. So we've got the program for you. And, and we see God, we see God using it. So let's check in. Tell me where you're where you're coming in from. Let's see what, what, what cities you're you're beaming in from. Tell me that so we can see what's going on. Oh, this lady loves my t-shirts. Yes, the t-shirts. That's one of our signature moves. They make me laugh despite the difficulty of it all. Well, that's what we're trying to do. A little bit of humor goes a long way uh, in the midst of this nightmare. We make fun of the Nork. Oh, here's, here's V. Johnson, divorce finalized last December. Praise God. Freedom Day. There was the, there was the initial Freedom Day of getting it and, and, and realizing what's going on. And then there are steps towards freedom. And then when you leave, when the separation, another Freedom Day. And then when you get that divorce, yes, I don't know if you drink champagne, but that would be appropriate at that time. Absolutely. Grand Haven. All right. Yes. Michigan. Sounds good. Yeah. Titusville, Florida. Billy. Great. I had a friend that worked in Titusville. It was years ago on one of these big uh, nuclear plants. Boy, that was years ago. Yeah. Sacramento. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, PA. Izzy Weising, my wonderful granddaughter, one of them, oh my goodness, is a huge Pittsburgh fan. Pittsburgh Steeler fan. I'm not. I'm a Buccaneer fan, but nonetheless. Manassas, Virginia. Yes, Wisconsin. I spoke uh, by the side of a frozen lake in Wisconsin. Oh, my goodness. Probably three or four years ago. Yeah, I'm not going back, but it was a wonderful time. Oklahoma. Montreal, Canada. Yeah, yeah. Alberta, Canada. My dad, who's in heaven now with my mom, was a Canadian. He was born in Canada. Toronto. South Dakota. Yeah. Great, great governor, I'm telling you. Yes. West Virginia, Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, we, we enjoyed Oregon. We didn't like the rain in Portland for two years. I dragged the blonde there and we had two years where we, I was in graduate school, Western Conservative Baptist Seminary and uh, rained every day for nine months. Uh, sure, things were green, but it was, it was, uh, it was rainy, but we got through. Yeah, go bucks and bolts. Got that right. Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, here's the good one. Tamar says, divorced January 2022, but still trauma bonded. I hear you. Absolutely, I do. That's where I think the book, I didn't want a divorce. Now what is going to help you? Tamar or Tamar, I'm not sure how you spell your name or pronounce your name. But yeah, the trauma bond doesn't just go when you get divorced. You've got to take the time and it's difficult work to get that bond ripped apart and, and dissolved. And that's going to take hard work, but you're going to be able to do it. Bunnell, Florida. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Angola, Indiana. Very good. Branson, Missouri. What a wonderful place. I've always wanted to take the blonde, the blonde to Branson and, and see some of the shows. Absolutely. Yeah, we haven't done that yet, but we're going to. We're getting old now, and that's what old people do. 
They get the RV and they go to Branson, Missouri. We, we might do that. Well, Patty's in bad shape. I'm so sad. I feel bad constantly every day. It's been five months. I'm not sure if it's been five months since your divorce or since you left him. It, it is a rough road. It is. But you're going to get through. Texas. Yeah, we love Texas. Another great governor like our governor, Ron DeSantis. Yes, yes. All right. There's some folks joining here. Phoenix, my wonderful mother-in-law, and she is wonderful, Is lives in the Phoenix area. Jeannie, wonderful person, always liked me. Sandy's dad wasn't too sure of me. I mean, can, can you imagine that? Not being sure of me? <laughs> anyway, and uh, but she always liked me, and he was a great guy too. He came around. Once we had our first grandchild, it was like magic. So I had to get Sandy pregnant right away so he'd like me, and that's what I did. Okay, very good. Okay, here's what we're going to do tonight. And I love the interaction. I want to first of all thank all of you who participated in our recent contest. Uh, where I was I was asking for input on your breakthrough God moments in the escape process. We got some wonderful content, which I'm going to be putting into uh, my my new devotional, which should come out uh, early summer. Um, we're, we're shifting our office now. We've all, I've always had an office to go to. Now we're going to move it home. And so I put the blonde in charge of that. But So that may take us up, might put off that project a little bit. But um, we appreciate that the devotional is going to be called I Will Be Free. And it will be actual stories of women and men who have escaped the narc in a number of different categories. I think it's going to be really super encouraging to those of you and those of you who you know who are going through the escape process. Scripture, God's truth, of course, Dave Clark's comments. I think it'll be very empowering, and that's what we're going to do. So you can look for that. Okay, today's topic is why you stay with the narc small n. It is always a small end for the narc, never capitalized. Same thing with Satan. In fact, Lori Slade Wagon, one of my dear friends, and some of you know her, maybe many of you do. Uh, check her out. She's wonderful with narcissism, but she she doesn't capitalize Satan, and neither do I. I think she's right. Not giving him that respect. Now, it's very difficult to face the truth that you are living with a narc. This will take months and, in many cases, years to actually face the truth. It's very difficult to prepare to leave the narc. There's no question about that. That's that way we have all these materials we've developed to help you do that. It isn't like, well, I'm married to a narc, I think I'll leave. No, no. There are months of preparation that will be necessary. In many cases, there are all kinds of obstacles to your escape. Now, our ministry is focused on giving you the tools that you need to escape the narc because God wants you to leave. It's not that God is looking down and saying, oh, it's okay if you leave. I, I, I guess I can live with that. No, no, he wants you to leave. Living with a monster is not something he wants for you or your kids. Now, a big part of leaving is getting rid of the lies that keep you with the narc. These lies come from your family of origin in many cases. The church, church is full of lies about narcissism. Th these people are frankly clueless. The Christian community and Satan, small s. He is a behind a lot of this. Now, what I've done is put together, and we're going to cover a little bit of that tonight, a seven-part video series that explodes these lies that keep you with the narc. Now, this video series is available to all, the, all of you who will join my Facebook subscription service. And this is a deal. We're not gouging anybody. We never have. We never will. It's $4.99, not even $5, not one penny less, per month for this. And for that, you'll get this series seven-part video series, and many other exclusive videos on a variety of topics. We're going to keep cranking this out. I'm the content machine. Love to create content, and we really see God using it. So if you want this Facebook subscription, and we're getting all kinds of signups, which is great, uh, you just simply go to my Facebook page. You make sure you're following it, and click on the pinned comment to join, and boy, you're in, and you'll have access to these videos. There's a previous video series that's on there right now about uh, when the narc turns your children against you, all right? that's And that's a four-part series, very specific, how to win those kids back. There's a whole strategy there. And now this seven-part series. Okay, let's get to the webinar, Why You Stay With the Narc. Now, um, and again, these, these, these a couple of principles I'm sharing tonight will be, uh, they're drawn from this seven-parter. Okay, now what I'm going to do is what I usually do. I'm going to teach a principle, 
And of course, you'll listen and, and I want to hear your interaction. I'll pause after I teach it and then we'll interact and uh, and find out what's going on. Okay. In fact, let me I'll check in a little bit here to see what's going on. And uh, before I start the before I start the teaching, because I love to have the interaction. You know I do. Yes. Okay, let's see what we got here. 23 years, lived in our basement for the last six months in one room, no TV, no dresser, no bed. Oh, forgive it. What a lazy butt. Uh, lays on the floor with one little blanket and one pillow. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's lost his job of 24 years, leaves every day for four hours to go where? Yeah, who knows? Who lives like that? Good question. Hopefully final papers in a few months. Oh, let's hope so. I talked to a lady just a couple days ago. Uh, these narcs, you know, and not all are lazy, but a number of them are just lazy. They're not going to work. They stop working and then you're their meal ticket. This lady's hanging on and you can't remove them from the home legally. They should be tossed on the garbage heap. You can't get rid of them legally. So at least, he, at least he's in the basement. And he can play the victim with his little futon and his little pillow. Maybe he's got a Snoopy doll. Who cares? Hang on. The divorce is coming. Hopefully that's pretty soon you can get rid of him. I mean, it's loathsome. But at least you can shun him and, and stay the heck away from him. Yeah, Charlotte, I hear you. I stayed because of my son. I wish I had left sooner. Boy, how many times have I seen that? Have I heard that? I know. Number one, all you moms out there that are thinking that way, and it's and it's a mom thing because instinctively you think, boy, I, I'm I'll stay with this dirt ball. I don't care the kind of abuse that I take, but I'll do it for my kids because I think it's better for the kids. It's I'm telling you now, and Charlotte would agree, it's not. I've never had a case where it made sense to stay with an art. I don't care how old your kids are. This isn't something easy I say, but I've never seen it work out. Even small children, the more time with the narc, the worse. So you need to do that. But having said that, if you're a mom that goes, oh, like Charlotte, and you have regrets, don't dwell on those regrets. Satan, who wanted you to stay in the first place, now is going to use those regrets against you to destroy you. God doesn't want that. You're forgiven. It was a mistake. It's still the fault of an arc, not your fault for destroying your kids and turning them against you. So all that can change once you leave. So don't dwell on regrets. All right, let's start from now moving forward and get you out of that relationship. And then there's a way to turn those kids back to you. All right. In fact, that four part series I mentioned earlier, when the narc turns your kids against you, that you get through the Facebook subscription will make, I think, a huge difference. Navigate the divorce trial when the wife is a lying, sociopathic narcissist. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, boy. Yep. When, the, the lies mate went over the judge. 24 years of marriage. Scott, let me tell you this. This is a man married to a sociopathic narc, and, and those terms go together. They have no conscience, and they will lie their heads off, and they can be persuasive. One of the keys that you'll find in my Escaping Your Narcissist book is a, a solid, mean, gutter-fighting attorney who wants to win. You have to refute these lies. The legal process is a nasty process and you don't, you don't stay above the, you know, above the moral plane. You got to fight dirty too. This is a war. When King David was fighting the Philistines, did he give them any breaks? No, he killed them. You have to wipe out the enemy. Now we're not going to kill the narc. God may take him out and let's hope so. But if he doesn't, you're fighting dirty. You want an attorney who's not sleazy, but is tough and mean and can blunt those, those lies in the attacks. That's absolutely essential. So you're preparing for the lies, and you let your attorney know what's going to come, and then you can face it and hopefully win. Okay, let's get to principle one here, and then I'll, I'm going to teach, and then I'm going to take another break, of course, and I'll I'll be uh, interacting with um, with you. Oh, here's, I mean, whenever I see, I'm, I'm kind of talking about ADD. Here's a good question. Um, how to let go of a narc with ADHD and Tourette's? Okay, Jody, I don't care what he's got. Frankly, God doesn't either. Now, he'll play the victim beautifully. I don't care what mental disorder. In this case, it's ADHD, Tourette's, whatever. The main problem is he's a narc. Even if he solved those issues, it doesn't make any difference. And there's medication, there's treatments, like he cares, and we'll even do them. His main problem is he's a narc. That's why you're leaving him. And it doesn't matter one whit why someone is destroying you, if they're destroying you. I want to find out the reason, the motivation. Who the heck cares? Just get out. So I don't, I don't care what the guy has. And and narcs are mentally ill. Okay, whatever. They could address that issue. There's all kinds of therapies, but they're not going to do that. Okay, here's principle number one. Before I look at the screen and get distracted once again, but I love your comments. Principle number one is you stay with the narc because you don't feel released 
by God. I hear this almost every day in my phone advice sessions from well-meaning, godly women and men. In fact, I was doing a phone advice session with a lady married to a narc just a few weeks ago. After telling me about his abuse of her over the years, and I always, I always have them tell the story, rages, verbal assault, silent treatment, control, the whole gamut. Gaslighting. She told me he was in an adulterous affair and was now living with the skank. Okay, she didn't use the word skank. She said mistress. I said, forget mistress. I want to hear you say to me, home wrecking skank, because that's what she is. Anyway, uh, after all this information she gave me, she told me straight face. I mean, she's being very honest. And she believed this. God has not really, he said, Dave, God has not released me from this marriage. Good hearted woman. Christian means well. She actually believed that. That is simply not true. I told her first, uh, ma'am, what marriage? You don't have a marriage. The narc has completely destroyed it. So there's nothing to be released from, frankly. But second, and here's the real key, God has so released you from this dead marriage and destructive marriage, but you're just not ready to see that. I continue. The Bible has released you from this abusive narc, I guarantee you. And I read her 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, which I'm going to read to you right now. If this is, isn't released from an ark, I don't know what is. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This is God speaking through Paul to Timothy and frankly to you and to all of us. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, Paul says. People, this is a description of an ark, the best I've ever read. You'd expect that from the Bible. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love. Sounding familiar? Unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. Narcs have no self-control. Brutal. Yeah, not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh my goodness. Narc. Narcdom right here. Having, and this is a good one too, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Yeah, that's covert narcissism. They shine in the church. The pastor loves them. People think they're just below Jesus and they're liars. They're skunks. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. Now what? Here's the release part. Now that would be enough. The Bible never leaves us hanging. Paul adds the punchline talking to Timothy, have nothing to do with them. Okay, that's release. This is God saying, get away from this sort of a person. There are no caveats in this passage. Well, if it's your husband, I guess not. No, if it's your wife, uh, sorry. No, sister, brother, who cares? You're done. Have nothing to do with them. Now, the truth is, and this is part of the codependent denial, you don't want to be released. I told this lady, you're not ready yet to face the truth. And I told this lady, and I'm telling many of you, that that's okay. We will start with where you are. I recommend you begin by reading. If you're in a codependent mode and you think you haven't been released from the narc, I want you to start. We've got many materials, but start with the 20 lies, 20 lies that keep you with your abuser. I'm going to explode 20 of the main lies, the top 20 lies that keep you with your abuser. And then you let me know, call me back. We can do a follow-up session and we'll start getting you out of codependent denial. I'm telling you right now, Everybody I hear that says, God has not released me from this marriage, I'm telling you, no, that's not true. God never contradicts his word and never will. And the word says, I could read you 25 verses. He's saying, if this is your situation with a serious sinner who will not change, who's destroying you, who's destroying your children, who's turning your own children against you, get out. I am telling you, you're released. Now, God knows it may take you some a, a, a ways to get there, but that's where I want you to get. Frankly, only because that's where God wants you to be. Okay, let's interact. You can talk about anything, but can you relate to this? Uh, was there a time you didn't feel released by God? Have you been caught in this lie before thinking you weren't released? Let's see what we got here. Oh, what verse are you reading? Sher Sherry says, it's second. I just read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. That's what I just read. It describes the narc. And then the punchline is, have nothing to do with people like this. Yeah. Leanne says, and I hear you, I just need my adult children back. He has poisoned them against me. It's been eight years. Is it too late? No, no, it's not too late. I, and you'll be shocked to hear, Dr. Clark has a book for this too. If it's an adult child, all right, then the book for you is adult children who break your heart. Specific plan of action for, for an adult child 
who has, and in this case, it's a narc that's, that's poisoned your child against you, your children. I'll tell you exactly what to do and what not to do. There's a plan of action to turn those kids back to you. It's never too late. It's incredibly discouraging. It's one of the most evil things about a narc, as a matter of fact. What kind of a person spends years, really from the moment of conception, if not birth, turning your children against you? A miserable, worthless, pawn scum narc. That's who. Evil doesn't even quite cover it. Satan, in fact, is using him as a tool. No normal dad or mom would ever, ever do that. Okay, divorce is one thing. Divorces happen, uh, and, and, and it can be reasonable. It's always nasty, but it doesn't mean that you're going to turn someone's children against them because you want to win and maintain control and make her suffer. No, no. My eyes were open because my children were begging for me to get a separation. Yes, you listen to your kids. The kids know how bad it is. And if they haven't been completely swayed by the narc and are on his side yet, hopefully not. If that's the case, we're going to help you. But if that hasn't happened yet, then your children can come to you and say, Mom, get away. Give us space because they're affected too. Absolutely they are. I've been trying for years to get out to the point I can only go to the only place open to me is Salvation Army Senior Living. Elsbeth, you know what? If that's the only place, then that's where you go. I'm just telling you, live under a bridge if you have to. Anything to get away from the narc. Now, there are times, in fact, many times when you, it takes time, you'll have to live with this dirt ball secretly. You have a secret plan going on. That's what I say in my Enough is Enough book. And you're getting all your ducks in a row before you're ready to leave. But at least you've got the hope that you know you're getting out. It takes time for a support team. Okay, and to gather your support team and to get ready to leave. I tried making friends with them, but it didn't work. Of course it didn't work. No, no. Don't bother trying to be friends with the narc. Yeah. My adult child will turn back to me even if she turned into a narc too. Yeah, well, that's a different operation. She wants to punish me because she believes her father's lies. Yep. I wrote the book for you too. It's the same series of steps. Now, if she is a full-blown narc, okay, we're going to have a problem. May not be much hope there. However, young adults... Uh, can make the change. If she's been poisoned by her father and it's like being in a tractor beam, that doesn't mean she's a full-blown narc, semi-narc, okay. But we can still change that if we if we build respect in her for you. And there's, there's a number of strategies that can make, I think, all the difference. Let's see what's going on over here. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have to say anything about my ex. The kids saw everything for themselves. Right. Now, having said that, my approach is to let, is a, while you're still living with your kids or even if they're, you're separated, you start telling them the truth about the ex, all right? Or even about your current husband who's a narc. They need to have the truth. You probably protected him for years. You're not going to do that anymore. You're now going to speak truth, not to trash him, but simply let them know this is abuse. This is sinful. Dad said this. Dad said that. Dad did this. Dad did that. That's wrong. That's sinful. Has to be pointed out. Yeah, this is another lady, Shelly. My adult daughter has shut me out as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's a narc and grandma's a narc. Oh, yeah, Ab absolutely. These, the, the, usually the mother of the narc is a full-blown narc herself. Absolute witch in a print dress, whatever. And, and that's, that explains why he's a narc. Yeah. But part of our ministry is to break the generational curse for your children. The narc's going to stay a narc. Who cares? His stupid mother's going to stay a narc. He's crazy. Who cares? We're trying to save your kids from that fate. And that's why we have these materials to turn them around. Whether they're young kids, elementary, high school, whether you live with them or not, whether they're adults, we have a plan for you. Do you ever tell the kids the truth about their dad? Absolutely you do. You're going to have to. Now, if they're already sided with him, they're not going to want to hear it. Too bad. You're not going to, you're not going to go on and on. You're not going to lecture them. You're going to tell them the truth. And when, if you're still living with the narc, part of my approach in my, in the, this new video series I've done from codependent to independent is you're going to start speaking up in front of the children. The narc has no problem speaking up in front of the kids. When he does something abusive, when he says something abusive in front of the children and you're there, then you'll respond at the time he chose that public venue fine. You're going to speak up because if you don't, he gets away with it. And the kids see you being weak. 
and, and disrespected, and they'll start doing the same thing to you. No, no, you're going to start speaking up. You'll say, that was an outrageous thing to say. That was a sinful thing to say. That's a lie. Your father is abusing me. You're going to say that, and he won't like it. He'll come after you, hammer and tongs. Too bad, because you're going to be ready for that too. You're not going to get into a back and forth dialogue. I'm not going to waste your time with that. But you're going to speak truth to your kids. Otherwise, you will lose your kids. We want them to start to see the truth about their father. What we're looking for is children that will say, you know what? Okay, this is my dad. The dad's the narc. This is my dad. Okay, I love my dad, but this is the truth about my dad. And they begin to pull away from him. We do not want them to be anything like him. If the narc mother raises a narc child, do they eventually clash or join forces together? The second one. Oh, yeah. They're lockstep and they're enmeshed. And little narc Timmy, who now is an adult man, isn't going to cross his mommy. Oh, no. He's scared to death of her. He will pee his pants because he's desperate for her approval. Oh, no. No, very likely there won't be any problems there because they think alike and they are alike. And uh, he's like he's married to his own dumb mother. So, yeah, they're, they're, you're not going to have any problems there. It'd be rare. They're going to be lockstep against you. We're getting rid of both of them. Here's the good news. When you get rid of the narc, you get rid of his crazy mother, too, and his whole stupid family. You're done with all of them. This is a cause for nothing less than celebration. Bigger than Mardi Gras. And I wouldn't recommend Mardi Gras anyway, but it's bigger, a bigger celebration than that. Yeah, he makes me think and tells me I'm the narc. Exactly. Classic narcdom. Yeah. I'm now questioning it. And no, it's not me. So painful. I know, Jody. Don't believe his stupid lies. This is classic narc. He'll turn it on you and, and say that you're the narc. Of course, you're not the narc. You are the codependent. Don't believe that for a second. Baloney. Tammy says, exactly. Amen. That's right. Preach it, uh, Dr. Clark. Yes. I went to two seminaries, but I'm not really past the material. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Maybe you're picking that up. Anyway, but we speak the truth. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Ex narc disowned his own mother because she stood up for me and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like it. Oh, yeah. Well, she probably wasn't a narc. Oh, yeah. If 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 a narc ever crosses his mother or or stands up for you, oh, for heaven's sake. I guess that was this wasn't a narc. No, it wasn't. My narc ex disowned his own mother. Yeah, that's unusual. But hey, all right, fine. You still need to be done with him, of course. Oh, the daughter, uh, this lady's daughter is going through this. And uh, yeah, he kicked her out. She's living in a hotel. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's paying for her to stay there. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Three kids. He thinks he's just wonderful. You know he does. Have, have, have your wife in a hotel. Ugh. Wants a divorce, but wants to see her. That's exactly right. Classic narcdom. They're so twisted up. In the middle of a divorce, and and, and you've left them, they still want to spend time with you. They, if you don't mind, and uh, and hopefully you don't, they'll want to have sex with you. In the middle of a divorce, they're nuts. Absolutely stark raving nuts. And just vicious. That, that No normal person would even consider that. I told a lady, I think it was last week, we're talking and she was she's in the process of breaking away from her narc. And she's getting stronger. She's using the the video series from codependent to independent, I believe. And it's really give, getting her stronger and her kids are noticing and she's speaking up. And she's reached the point now where she's disconnected from the narc and she wants to have nothing to do with him. I said, good for you, sister. And she said, he, spill, he still expects to have sex. I said, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Oh, but if I don't, he gets angry. Who cares about him? When you have sex with a narc, it hurts you. You're just being used. You can say no more. What's he going to do? Divorce you? Oh, please, dear Jesus, divorce me. He's probably not going to do that. Now he'll tell you, well, if you won't have sex with me, that's against the law or against the Bible, and he'll bring the pastor in. Ignore those people. You, In a normal marriage, of course, you would not deny your partner that, but this isn't a normal marriage. Uh-uh. You're done being touched by him. If he brushes by you in the kitchen, you have to throw up in a bucket. You're through with that dirt ball. And never again do you have to have sex with him. And then, of course, that's he'll say, well, I, I, then you forced me to use porn. Are you kidding me? No, it's still his fault. Well, you'll force me to have an affair. He's probably already having affairs. Who cares? You're done. This is not Saudi Arabia. You can say no to sex, and there's no law in the land that will force you to do it with anybody, let alone a narc. 
Yeah, I tried everything to keep him happy. Oh, I know. That's codependent talking. Debbie gets it now. But when you when you're a loving wife and you don't realize quite what's going on, you just love him and love him and love him. And the church will teach you to do that. Just keep loving him, sweetheart. Love and meet his needs until you're just about broken down in the hospital. And eventually one day, they never say when, but someday he will eventually just turn around and start loving you. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And 95% of pastors believe it. And even Christian counselors, many do. Stupid. Wrong. Not biblical. That's called enabling the narc. Now, it takes years. Don't regret if you've done that. It's just time to stop it and to pull back. God doesn't want you to love the narc. He wants you to leave the narc. Big difference. Yeah, and this is part of Charlotte's is saying all you are saying truth, but she she has trouble trusting people. After when you're burned by a narc and the trauma's there, until you heal from that completely, you're not going to trust anybody, let alone another man. And that's perfectly normal. But as you heal, I'm here to tell you, as you heal, and we've got the materials for you. I didn't want a divorce. Now what is the book for you to heal from the traumas after the divorce? It's hard work. I'm not going to lie to you. Very hard. You can heal completely. I'm telling you completely, 100%, and then the trust will come back. Now, you'll be, you'll be leery and you'll be careful, but as you get healthy, you can trust again. Okay, let's watch our time here. Just past eight. We're doing fine. All right. I'm going to interact a little bit more, and then we're going to, we'll do principle two. Now, again, if, and if you want to get the seven-part series, and I'm telling you, it, this is some of the best work I've done. I'm just saying that. I think it is. God really was with me throughout as I developed this. And I ran it by the blonde as I was doing it. I think it's very solid. Phil Douglas of Douglas Creative Marketing involved. His dear wife, Nancy. My daughter, Leanne, who's joined the team. I think it's really going to make a difference. And if you want that seven-part series of why you stay with the NARC, then just you just have to become a Facebook subscriber. And I'm telling you what, for five bucks a month, that's almost nothing. We're not gouging anybody. It's a deal. The deal of the century. I'm not, I like that. My pillow guy. Anyway, but I think it'd be really helpful to you. You will have access to that, and I think it can make a big difference. Well, let's interact a little more, and then we'll uh, I'll go over principle two here. Thanks for the input. The yeah, adult Sunday school teacher. Oh, yeah, the church loved him. Two-year affair, refuses to resign. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, all you can do is report that to the church. But as she's finding out, he's got the church in his back pocket. He will simply say, my wife's a liar. She's crazy. He's already poisoned the pond. All right, so you, nothing you can do about it. Your responsibility is to report this to the church leadership. Your adult Sunday school teacher uh, has had a two-year affair. Okay, that, that's it. They take it from there. You don't have video for them. If they don't believe you, you find a different church. God is going to handle this in his own way. And there will be justice for those church leaders. And there will certainly be justice for the narc himself. That's going to come. And maybe sooner rather than later. But it's just loathsome. Because you're often not believed. What the narc does, everybody in your life, he'll cut you off from or poison the best way he can. If you've got supportive, loving parents, he wants nothing to do with them. He will isolate you from them, move you to Montana or two states away. Or I don't care if they live down the street. He'll cut you off from them, make you choose between them and him. Sister, brother, supportive parents, neighbors that like you. And then and, and in the church you go to, he'll get all of them on his side. So everybody loves him. Unbelievable, but that, that's what happens. And that's part of your recovery to get out of all those circles and develop a whole new group of friends and support people. If your own family's dumb enough to support him and frankly hate, hateful enough to support him, you're, you're cut them off too. Talk to a lady on the, on the phone. I think it was the beginning of this week. And she's got, uh, she has wealthy parents and she's, she's locked in a vicious divorce battle with an arc. And her dumb parents are not supporting her in that. They they still uh, send birthday cards to the narc, and they and they spend time with him because they told her, my client, oh, but it, you know if if we if we cut him off, we won't be able to see the grandkids. I said, get away from your stupid, sinful parents, and they're pillars of the church for heaven's sake. No, no, they should be on your side and cut him off. Unbelievable. You know that's that's just evil. And if you came from a home like that, it makes sense why you married a narc. That's not always the case. There are plenty of clients I have that had very solid homes, loving mom and dad, and they, and they had no experience with narcs. 
and they were just simply fooled by the narc and they didn't realize they didn't realize what they were getting. Okay, that is often the case and no big deal. But very often the family of origin, there's issues. Yeah, took him 25 years with a covert narc to figure out what was going on. Yeah, that, that is perfectly normal. You look back and think, 25 years, how could I have missed it? Well, you weren't looking for it. And these covert narcs are masters at making you doubt yourself and persuading you that you're the problem. And they have the power of the church at their disposal that's behind them. Because most churches will say it's the wife's responsibility. That's to make the marriage work. That is not what the Bible teaches. In fact, quite the opposite in Ephesians 5. I'm not sure what Bible they're reading. The husband is the leader. He's to love his wife as Christ loved the church. End of story. That's, that's a huge amount of responsibility for the husband, not the wife. Okay. Yeah, enable it. Everybody knows about my son's wife. She's a, definitely a narc, but they enable it. Yeah. You know how many gutless wonders are out there that are Christian people? I mean, gutless wonders. They won't confront the narc. They won't, they won't um, even cut him off and side with you because they're gutless and they're scared of him. And they hate conflict. You avoid people like that. You want to go to war with people like that that will run like scared rabbits? No, no. You get warriors on your team, people that will stand up to him, that will run interference, that will come to your home when he's there to help you pack up your stuff and hold him at bay. Those are the kind of people we're looking for. And all those of you that that that, that know someone who has to get away from a narc, step up and help that person and run interference. It, may, it means the world when you have people on your team. Absolutely. Lisa's so glad she found me. Well, I'm... I'm glad you found me too. Yes, God is good. 17 years for Roseanne. For Rowan. You know what? That's long enough. Look, seven days is enough. Seven years is enough. 17 years, yeah, that's long enough. I don't care. I've talked to ladies sometimes who are well into their 70s and it's been 40, 50 years with the narc. And I say to them, you know what, sweetheart? You can still leave. Whatever time you've got left, and God knows, get out. You can get out now. Oh, the grandkids. Oh, the who cares? Live your life out in peace, and you can still do it. Never too late. Just went no contact. Good for you. Cut him off. He'll probably blow your phone up. Ignore him. Because what often happens is, and many of you know this, when the scripture talks about don't return to your vomit, it's like when you go back to a narc because he love bombed you, and now he's so sorry, and he's going to be different, and he makes all kinds of promises, and you think, well, boy, I, I think I'll give him another chance. Uh, ends up biting you, doesn't it? I mean, biting you. Don't do that. If you'd say, Dave, I've done that several times. Okay, okay. Don't regret that. Just simply stop it. Get your ducks in a row and leave him and never look back. You can expect the love bombing. You can expect the fake repentance. And it's a masterful Oscar-winning production and performance. Ignore it. And when you do that, he'll turn on you like a snake because it's all not real. I tell ladies, I don't care after hearing their, their nightmare stories of abuse and, and destruction and physical harm and emotional harm and turning the kids against you, I don't care. I say, and God doesn't care if he even changes at this point. You are done. Now, he's not going to change anyway, frankly. One out of a two million, it's like winning the lottery, might actually change, but it doesn't make any difference. You're done. That bridge is burned. You will never trust him again, and you never have to, period. That doesn't sound very Christ-like, does it? It is exactly what Jesus would say. Absolutely. In fact, he already did. You read Jesus' words to the Pharisees in Matthew. Oh my goodness. These were narcs. And they're the covert narcs of their day. Those Pharisees and Sadducees, oh, respected by the people, godly people, praying on the street corners, awful wolves in sheep's clothing. And what did Jesus do? He laid them out. They killed him for it, but he called a spade a spade and he called them out. So Jesus is fully in favor of you getting out and never going back. And you know what? If the narc actually ends, ends up changing and it's a miracle, hey, fine, whatever. Doesn't make any difference. You're still gone and you don't have to go back. I left it to 49 years, Jerry says, and he wanted, he wanted to help me move. <laughs> you know he did. Classic narc. Now, some will be vicious and, and destroy your stuff and all that and keep you from getting it. But others, like the covert narc, oh, no. They want to look good. Uh, I, I will help you. He won't admit to any fault, but he'll he'll help you move because that makes him look good. And he wants the people helping you move to say, well, this guy can't be that bad. Baloney. 
You don't let him carry one of your paper clips out to the moving truck. No, no, you're done. Okay, before I get too carried away, which is too late for that. Principle number two, let's get to principle number two of why you stay with the narc. And again, I've got a ton of principles in this seven-part video series that you need to get, up to you. Join our Facebook subscription service. It's it's pennies a day, whatever. It's five dollars. It's five dollars a month, and you'll have access to this material anyway. Okay. You, principle number two: you stay with the narc because you fixate on the fantasy. This fixation on the fantasy is part of your denial, and it is strong. It's how you cope. It helps you stay with a man who is doing serious harm to you and your kids. Now, when I say fantasy, I mean the fantasy of a happy marriage and family. You want this so badly. You know what? We all do. That's why I married the blonde. And she's a wonderful person. If you knew her, you'd love her. She's beautiful. She's blonde, of course, She's, which is important. She's spunky. She's feisty. She's brilliant. And we wanted this life together. God's given it to us. Now, it hasn't been easy because she lives with me, but we've done well. But everybody wants that. When you marry a narc, you're never going to get it. But that takes years to figure out. You, you were sure you had the right guy. All the ladies I talk to on the phone say, oh, and even the guys say, I, I was sure I had the right person. Charming, loving, caring. It's called love bombing, but you don't know that at the time. And codependently, you need to keep believing you have the right guy. So you feed the fantasy every chance you get. God isn't into fantasy. God is into reality and the truth. Listen to Jesus in John 8, 32. The words of Jesus. He says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay, he wants you to know the truth about the narc. Absolutely he does. And if you could talk to Jesus today, and you can through prayer, he would tell you, if he could sit down at a table like this, he'd say, sweetheart or, or sir, you're married to a narc. Never going to change. I want you to get out. That's exactly what he would say. Many in the church would say just the opposite. Stay, love him, it's your fault. You know, do the best you can. It's better for the kids if you stay, and on and on, a pack of lies and frankly stupidity. Jesus would say, get out, because he knows he's not going to change. So what you do to feed the fantasy is you ignore and suppress all the narc's bad, sinful, abusive words and actions. You just forget them. You just stuff them down. Because if you focused on the abuse, which is what I want you to do, it will destroy your fantasy, and you're not ready for that yet, okay? We hopefully will get you there. Like your mother or father may have done in your family of origin, you keep your rose-colored glasses on, and so you say over and over, and you think over and over, there's nothing to see here. Everything's fine here. He's not a bad guy. He was nice to me last Tuesday. As my dear mother used to say, and she's in heaven along with my dad, and my dad's the happiest guy, the happiest day of my dad's life. Well, the first happy happy day was coming to Jesus. Second happy day was marrying my mom. And the third happiest day was when he died because he wanted to see my mom. But as my dear mother used to say, you know what? You're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. This ship's going down and, and you're trying to make it look pretty. That's what, that's what the codependent does. It's like living with a terror, an actual terrorist, but pretending he's Prince Charming and making yourself believe that. Nobody wants to believe that they're living with a terrorist and they're going to have to leave him. And of course, you well know that when you start pulling away and you start getting strong, there's going to be a backlash like you wouldn't believe. And you have to be ready for that. And you have to protect the kids. There's a lot of things to do. That's why it takes time to be ready. Even when intellectually you get it and you're ready to leave, you got to be emotionally ready. You got to get the kids ready. You got to get the right attorney. You got to get your support team. You got to get ready for the backlash. There's things you've got to do. That's why I did the series that you can get from codependent to independent, getting strong enough and getting ready to leave. So when I do my phone advice sessions with abused wives in particular, and it's mostly wives and some husbands, I have them go over what the narc has said and done to them over the years. I say, start off from where you met and walk me through courtship, walk me through the marriage. What has he said? What has he done? What has life been like with him? And they start to tell their story. And in almost every case I've had, the abuse starts very early on. They'll say, you know what? Looking back, courtship was great, but there were some red flags that I missed. And then certainly after the wedding, oh yeah, it goes downhill pretty doggone quickly. The abuse takes many forms and it never stops. 
So when they, when this person is telling their story, they'll often begin to realize as they tell it, and I'm listening and making my comments, they'll say, oh, yeah, I can see all that abuse over the months, over the years, and the light begins to dawn. If she doesn't realize it, the client I'm working with, that's what I'm for. I'll tell her she is being abused, and it's time to get ready to get out of the marriage. They need that confirmation from somebody who gets it and who's objective. That's, that's no axe to grind. If I talked, and I talked to a couple ladies last week that, in fact, were not married to narcs. They thought they were. I said, no, I think there's some decency here. And there's another book for that, Married But Lonely. Okay, that happens. Not very often am I in this new lane we're in, but it does happen. I'm not going to call every guy a narc unless he is. I have to get the story first. Now, I'm not subtle. I'm not elegant. I'm direct, like my dear mother. My dad was a gracious person, very, very, very kind and sweet. That's not me. Okay, never has been. Now, part of clinging to the fantasy is that you focus on every tiny positive scrap the narc throws your way. And narcs aren't stupid. They will, they will throw little crumbs from the master's table to keep you around. After a week, for example, after a week of silent treatment, let's say, the narc comes home and suddenly is nice to you. He's pleasant. You should think, and you will think once you're healthy, when you've gone through Dr. Clark's programs, nice, and you might even say out loud, out loud nice try, butthead. After a week of ignoring me, you all of a sudden act like nothing happened? I don't think so. Get out of this kitchen but you don't do that. And yes, I did say butthead, and that's being generous. But because you're not healthy yet, because you're still in codependent denial, you know what you think? You think, oh, what a relief. I love it when he's nice to me. Oh man, I'm glad that silent treatment's over. If he was like this all the time, we'd be great together. So you forget about the negative abuse and you focus on, oh, he's nice now. Well, two major problems with this kind of thinking. One, you're ignoring the week of silent treatment. No normal man would ever, ever do that in a million years. You might have a, when the blonde and I have an argument and something happens, which, which happens, we're both kind of feisty people, things happen. Dr. Clark makes mistakes, not many. <laughs> anyway, okay, there might be, a, might be a few minutes of uncertainty and walking down the hall, but you know what we do? We come back together and we talk it out and we fix it. Why? Because we're normal and because we love each other. The narc doesn't love you. He loves himself. Second major problem is he's never going to stay nice. He's nice now, 20 minutes, a half an hour, two days, maybe a week. Something's going to trigger him because everything triggers the narc. You can drop a spoon on the floor and he's triggered and now he hates you. And he goes back into punishing you or calling you a name. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, those are the two principles. Okay, let's interact. We got some time here at the end. Talk to me. Have you fixated on the fantasy? Have you been guilty of the denial and, and, and having ignored the narc's abuse? Let's see what you got to say here. And then we'll, I'll interact with you and then we'll wrap things up by 8.30, which is what we do. Yeah, mine was two-faced. I never knew what made him switch back and forth. Oh, yeah. It's like a light switch. Happy, happy. Charming, charming. Loving, loving. Especially when you want sex. And then like a light switch. And there's no good reason for it. You can walk into the room. And he doesn't like the sweater you're wearing or your, your clothes are inappropriate or whatever. A piece of lint floats in the, in, the, in the light and he's mean as a snake. And he switches back and forth and back and forth as this dear lady is saying. And that's part of the codependent tractor beam. It just, it keeps you stuck. I want you to focus on the negative and forget the positive because the negative is who he really is. Yeah, they're nice when they get their way. That's exactly right. You know what? The, the narc never learns that you don't get your way in this world all the time. It's called sacrifice. It's called love. It's called unconditional. I don't want to go to the craft show with the blonde. Why? Because I don't like craft shows. I love her and I like being with her. And so we go to the craft show and we walk around and it's great fun. Why? Because I'm with the blonde. It's as simple as that. How do you regain your confidence so I can make step towards leaving? Boy, great question. I have a whole video series for you. All right. Reasonably priced. I think it's life changing from codependent to independent because as this lady says, she, and she's being honest. I like that. Doesn't have the confidence, doesn't have the self-esteem. I, I have no idea how to get out of this. I've been crushed. I've been beaten down. Exactly. Normal. We take you from where you are. You're not leaving tomorrow. It could be five, six months down the road. Could be a year. But we start the process of getting stronger and speaking up. 
and building your support team and getting back your dignity and your self-esteem and, and keeping your kids from being turned against you. That's why I did that video series. I, I think it's money well spent. For the price of one session with me, phone session, you get hours of content from codependent to independent. As you can see, I'm just answering the questions that make me think of a product to sell. <laughs> I'm kidding. Look, we just have the product. What can I tell you? And they're helpful to you. And they're not overpriced. Some of the things you see on the internet, for heaven's sake, they, they like cost a fortune in this narcissistic space. We're, we're reasonable people. He cheated through a phone with a woman. When I caught him, he put it back on me and said, yeah, if I hadn't taken care of him, exactly. Oh, yeah. You catch a narc in an affair, you catch him in adultery, guess whose fault that's going to be? Yours, oddly enough. When he stands before God, he will have to own that completely. You tell him to buzz off. It's always your fault. People sin because they want to. It has nothing to do with the wife. Frankly, it wouldn't make any difference if you had denied him sex for no good reason, which is not true for 10 years. You still don't get a pass from God for sinning. You don't. But of course, that's not been the case anyway. Most of the ladies I talk to have done their best as a wife, but you know what? With a narc, it's never good enough. You never reach the bar, ever. Let's see what else is happening here. Oh, can I join your codependent to independent video series? Even though I'm not married to a narc, but I live with both my narcissistic brother and father. Oh, yeah. I think this applies too. You'll have to switch a few things, but I think if you buy that series, oh, yeah. If you have another narc in your life and you're living with them, if you're not living with them, it might be different. But if you're living with them, oh yeah, I think the same principles would apply. You're going to start speaking up. You're going to start getting strong and get out of their tractor beam. Oh yeah, I think it fits. Absolutely, I do. Yeah, this Angela says her dirt ball. She didn't say dirt ball, but I'm sure she's thinking that. He blamed me for his affair too. Oh yeah, everything is your fault. The trouble in the Middle East, your fault. Okay, everything is your fault. If the kids bring, bring, a, bring home a bad grade, your fault. Everything the man does wrong, it's not sin anyway, but it's your fault. He justifies it. Classic narcissism. Rebecca likes it. Good for you, Rebecca. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. She promised herself she'll never put herself under the sexual abuse again. Good. He can treat me like crap, but it's my duty to, to give it. It's not my duty to give it to him. Absolutely it's not. You imagine a loving Heavenly Father. And I'm not going to get into the details here, but, but for a woman especially, the sexual act is, is a very vulnerable time. And so you, God would never have you do that with anyone, husband in particular, who is treating you like garbage because that destroys you. It hurts you. It's soul crushing. You're not doing it anymore. Sex is off the table. He'll have the world's biggest fit. Who cares? And you get ready for the church fools, and I call them church fools because that's what they are. They'll, they'll go to the Bible and say, well, it says in the Bible here that your body's not your own, and you, it's your job to give him sex. Well, number one, it shouldn't be a job anyway. It should be a joyous, we both want to do this experience. But the fact of the matter is the Bible does not. That's a normal couple with someone who is for the wrong reason, denying their partner sex, punishment, leverage. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a monster, a terrorist who's destroying you. Uh-uh. You don't high-five that guy, let alone have sex with him. No, 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 no. Good. Michelle's not going to give any either. We're stopping sex across the country here with narcs, and it's about time. We're done with it. Oh, they'll be furious. Too bad. No, the deal is, if you make changes and you spend 10 months to a year, narc, working on yourself and in sackcloth and ashes and owning all your sin and revealing sin that, that your wife doesn't even know about and becoming the next Billy Graham, yeah, we'll talk about your physical relationship. You're not going to do, he's not going to do that because he's not at fault. When you don't have a conscience, there's no chance to change. That's the beginning of change. I've been a therapist for 40 years. No one has ever changed in my office unless they first admitted their sin and were broken before the Lord. The narc is incapable of doing this. Now, for brief periods, he can fake it, but he can't sustain it. And that's not true repentance. True repentance, once it begins, never stops. And all of us should be living in a perpetual repentance state because we continue to sin. We should be humble and working on ourselves. 
This is good, Michelle. A relentless child that keeps asking some question and never gets the answer. <laughs> oh boy, that's a good one. We've got these wonderful grandkids, and they and they're wonderful, and of course they're godly, uh, but they're and sweet. But they they will if they want something, they'll keep on asking until they get the answer they want. <laughs> of course, the right thing to do, and our our kids and their and their husbands, uh, you know, know how to handle it. You don't you don't give in to that. The answer is no, and there'll be consequences if you keep asking. But but the narc continues to ask, and they wear you down, and you can begin to think, well, boy, if I. I guess I'll just give in just to shut him up. No, no, you're paying too high a price for that. Way too high a price. The answer is no. Well, when can I expect to have sex? Well, not in the near future. I'll let you know. Oh, drive him nuts. The true answer is never. You don't have to tell him that. Yeah, here's a lady. Cindy's guy is faking it right now. His, her narc. And is so spiritual. Oh, you know he is. God has changed his life. Absolutely. But no repentance on his part. Exactly. There are steps of repentance, and it's obvious to everyone, and it's sustained. No, no, he's just talking. You know these miraculous, you know, you know, uh, transformations. Oh, I Jesus talked to me. I was reading in the Bible. I've got it now. No, you don't. If you're willing to spend months working on this, get back to me. The right man will do that. The narc won't. Uh, uh-uh. he will be furious with you because you haven't acknowledged and applauded and had a parade for his fake repentance. It's fake. It's like having a Super Bowl parade for the team that lost. Why would you do that? You have to win. You have to actually change to get a parade. And the right man never asked for a parade anyway. It would be inappropriate. Yeah, two adult children, Faith says, have been poisoned against her. I hear you. God loves you. Get the book, Adult Children Who Break Your Heart. I'm telling you, God has allowed us to develop these materials with the help of my team, and we have a lot of interaction. We develop these books and video series. Now we have the Facebook subscription service, great content there. It will make all the difference for you. If you like this kind of an approach, which is in your face, and frankly, it's edgy, but it's solidly biblical, okay, then that's what you need. And I think God can use it to get you out of this relationship, and not just out, but with your relationship with your kids intact, or winning back your kids afterwards, and then healing after the fact. As one lady mentioned earlier, the trauma bond doesn't stop. The trauma doesn't stop, period, once you you have actually divorced him. Now, after the divorce, you can heal from all of that completely, but it takes some time and effort. Divorce, of course, is what you have to do, but that isn't the end of the story, and you have to keep dealing with this dirt ball unless God takes him out. Well, that's why I wrote, I didn't want a divorce, now what? You go to the website, davideclarkphd.com, Clark with an E, don't forget that E, Everything's there. Everything you need, the entire package to get away from the narc and protect your relationship with your kids. Okay, we have one minute to go. This is like a countdown. I'll interact a little more and thank you so much for for joining us in this live team. We're going to keep doing this because I like doing it. I love the content. And again, a huge thank you to all of you who gave me content for this new devotional, I Will Be Free devotional. I think it's going to be a great tool that God's going to use along the way to encourage you because you, as, you're, as you're coming out of the fog, as you're seeing the truth, as you're getting out of denial, as you're getting strong enough to leave the narc, and, and afterwards, oh, it's so discouraging at times, very low points, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, feeling overwhelmed. That's why I'm writing this devotional. And it's going to be the words of, of actual people Victims of narcs who have 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 this verse, this song, this breakthrough God moment. It's going to be powerful in your own words. I think it's going to be a big deal. Again, if you want my uh, my materials, just go to the go to the website davidclarkphd.com, Clark with an E. And again, this Facebook, this brand new Facebook subscription service, I think is a gold mine. Five dollars a month. It's it's an incredible deal, better than my pillow, and you will be able to have access to these exclusive videos. Well, thanks a lot for sharing and for coming on, and we will see you at the next live stream.